everybody, welcome back to Bentley House. I'm Aira, and today is part two of the cardboard house build. If you haven't seen part one, I will make sure and add a link up in one of these corners so you can go and check that out. In part one, I showed you how to build the structure itself out of cardboard, but in today's video, I'm going to show you how I did the thatch roofing, the flooring on both the first and second floor, and also how I made the stone steps. I also told you I was going to make one piece of cardboard furniture. I didn't get that done in time to be included in this video, but stay tuned to the end of this video so I can tell you a little bit more about that. To begin this video, I'm going to start with the stairs. I'm starting with this four ply sheet, which means it's four pieces of cardboard glued on top of each other. I'm going to start cutting them into sections to make stair steps. This is what's going to become my stairs that go with the house. When I start to cut through it, some of the pieces actually do come off because I used hot glue to put these cardboard pieces together, and if it's not glued, 100% when I start off, all I have to do is add a little bit of hot glue to get these guys to stick together. This piece ends up being about an inch and a quarter by, I think it's like two and a half inches or so, but you can create the stairs whatever size you want to go with your project. I'm going to make several of these and then they are going to start to be stacked on top of each other with them overlapping about half of the step. If you want to make your stair steps a little bit steeper, you may need to have a higher tread, which means more layers of cardboard. So you may need five or six layers of cardboard before you cut your pieces apart. Mine ends up being a pretty not steep staircase, and because of this, I decide to add some bins in the staircase so it isn't forever long. To do this, I just start gluing them down at angles to create bins in the stairs. At this point, it tends to be a little bit wobbly, but that's okay because eventually we're going to add some support. Now to create the base for my stairs, I'm taking a piece of cardboard and lining it up where the landing for the stairs is going to be. This is going to kind of extend outside of my original dollhouse. I want it to match up with the very top uh, it's like this little balcony piece that I made on the second floor and then I'm trying to see where the bottom step lands on the lower level. Then I'm just going to take my pencil and mark out the shape that I want the landing to be. Once I have that marked out, I can just cut it out of the cardboard. Now I'm just going to recheck everything to make sure it's how I like it. I also want to make sure that my staircase base is the same thickness as the base of my dollhouse because I want it to look like an extension of the floor. I don't want there to be like a little step. Now that I have these two pieces, I'm going to create supports that go underneath the stairs and connect with the base. I did this simply by adding a few bits of cardboard and these will all be hardened by the mixture I showed you how to mix in the very first episode. I added some whimsical little angled pieces. These are not necessary. I just wanted it to look like, uh, since it's kind of a fairy tale house, I wanted to continue being whimsical in both my design and my structural support. I'm going to cover this with, again, the mixture I made in the first video, which was uh, equal parts the um, joint compound and glue, and I actually ended up doing two layers of this, and that worked out really well, and I let it dry completely overnight. I'm using the same gray color I used on the outside of the house to cover the entire stair steps. This does have a very rocky and stony type texture, so I did decide to make these look like stone. Once it's completely covered in gray, I'm going to take some white and I'm going to dry brush white over the steps. This is what really brings out the texture and makes this look like stone that's been worn over the years. If you do decide to make this for yourself and you want your stone to look even more worn, you can kind of crush the cardboard in the center of the steps to make it look like people have put their foot there for years and years and years. And you can use black to kind of make it look as though soot and grime has gotten in between the steps. For now, I'm just leaving it very light and fresh with a dry coat of white paint. 
While the stairs are drying, I'm gonna go ahead and get started on the flooring. I'm continuing by trying to use recyclable materials or materials you can find in your home. This is a packaging for my kids' muffin snacks. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start cutting large rectangular that are like I'm not completely rectangular because I'm curving the corners I'm going to cut these out and this is going to create a stone floor on the bottom floor of the house I did have a few requests in the past I've gotten requests for how I did grandmama's floor in the Adams family house this is how I did it I had a few more bricks left over from the outside of the house so I spilled those into the stone floor collection and then took apart this box which was holding them all so I could continue to cut stones from them. Before sticking on the stone shapes that I just cut out, I want to make sure and sand down the top of my cardboard. The only reason I'm really doing this is because some of the mixture I put all over the house in the last episode dripped down and made some parts that were kind of jutting up from the floor. Since I want all my stones to be flat, I really want to sand any parts down so that everything can lay as flat as possible. Once I start gluing down the stones, it's kind of like putting together a puzzle that doesn't really have a right answer. Because they are rectangular and kind of squarish, sorry, there's something, <laughs> they're doing lawn stuff outside. Uh, so I'm sorry if you can hear that. So what I'm doing is I'm just putting the stones down wherever I feel like they fit really well and as I go I'm putting my one two three blocks down on the steps because these are made of paper they will want to slightly curl up as they dry and so as I work I'm just kind of sliding the one two three blocks along they're really heavy so it helps these stones kind of take hold as the glue dries. The other great thing about doing this in cardboard is once you have your pieces cut, you're not set with that size stone. So if you get into a situation where you don't have a size stone that really fits, just cut it down. It's paper. It's super easy to cut and uh, make sure that it fits in the space that you need it to fit into. So I start out with the stones that I previously cut and had done and then once I get to a smaller portion of the floor and I don't actually have pieces that fit that part of the floor, I custom cut those and uh, make them fit. Once I've let everything have a really good amount of time to dry, I want to make sure that the glue underneath each stone has had time to really take hold. I am going to use gray paint and cover the entire floor, making sure I get in between the grooves of each stone. The reason I want to make sure that the glue dries is that the paint can make the paper or the cardboard want to curl up again. So if you used enough glue and you gave it enough time to dry, it shouldn't curl up and it should just stay flat, which is what you want for your stone floor. I'm also going to make sure to paint the edge of my dollhouse floor because I want it to look like stone through and through. To add some texture and some interest to each stone, I'm going to take a light tan color. I'm putting a little bit of it onto a paper towel, folding it over my fingers, and then I'm just going to kind of dab it onto each stone. The reason I'm doing this is because I do not want any of that color to get into the grooves that go in between the stones. Eventually, once everything's dry, if you want to add some more grime or some more mold, the places in between the stones is a great place to add that. I didn't do that in this project, but um, it really does help make it look like an old stone floor if you do that. The upper floor of the house, I want to have a wood floor. And so I'm doing basically the same thing. It's just a different shape. I'm cutting a bunch of really long rectangles and then I will start to slowly add them. And I did cut some of them in half because you, as you go, you wanna have longer strips that you start a row with and then you wanna have shorter strips that you start the next row with. This will help your floor look like it has more of a variation in the pattern because you don't want all of your floor planks to line up perfectly. It's not not like a, a brick wall. 
I'm using my one, two, three blocks here again because it worked really, really well on the bottom floor. As I'm going along, I'm moving the blocks so that I make sure that everything lays down. You can see that my floor is not completely straight and for me, I'm okay with that because I'm still going for this whimsical feel to the house, but um, using the cardboard for the flooring really helps with that because if I was using wood and the floor wasn't completely flat I would have a really hard time with bending the wood to make it match the floor. To start with painting the floor I'm going to do one coat of a really dark brown over the entire floor and then the second coat is going to be done with a lighter brown and I'm using a paper towel like I did before on the stone but instead of dabbing up and down to make a speckled effect I am going to be moving the paper towel along the long lines of the flooring to make streaks on the floor and this is going to give kind of the streak look that you get with wood. So on the left here, there's no streaks, and on the right, there are streaks. So you can kind of see the difference that it makes when you add that second color of brown. On my stair step landing, I did the exact same stone pattern I did on the first floor, and I did this so that it all looks like one continuous floor once I add the stones to the house. I like doing it this way because it gives me the option of having the stairs or not having the stairs. I can take them away if I would like to, but I still feel like it looks like one floor on the bottom floor and just gives a little bit more interest than just a rectangular room. Now you may notice in the back here, I did also extend the flooring into the tower. I wanted to match the floors with the correct story. So the bottom floor has the stone flooring and the second floor has the wood flooring. So once it's all put together, it matches. Now you may remember that I was having issues with the tower in part one. I did not like how it was turning out. I had so many great suggestions down in the comments, but when someone suggested just destroying the tower, <laughs> making it look like it had kind of crumbled and was open to the sky. Any chance I have to destroy something and make it look old and crumbly, I am all for it. So I went for that idea. However, if you decide to make this project, you can make it any way you want. By using cardboard, it really does give you the ability to just continue to build, whether you want to build up or out, make an extra large tower with a huge roof, whatever you want to do. But for this build, I decided to cut more off. This actually gave me a really good opportunity to test how easy it is to cut into the cardboard once I've applied the drywall glue mixture. And as it turns out, it's not the easiest, but it is definitely doable without having to get a power tool. Now this Exacto was struggling because sometimes it always struggles. I got a new Exacto and it was working a lot better and cut through the pieces a little bit easier. It still took quite a bit of elbow grease to get through the individual pieces, but I eventually did get the top of the tower off and immediately felt like it looked like some kind of hat. So anyway, moving on. This is how I ended up with the top of the tower. I decided to put it next to the house itself to see if I liked the height. What I want it to look like is that there was a tower top there, but it has fallen over the years and the residents have just eventually made do. I didn't do much initially with the tower because if you remember, I wasn't super happy with it, but now that I have cut the top part off, I need to go back with my drywall compound and fill in anywhere that the cardboard is showing. And while that's drying, it's not completely dry yet, I went and got a wire hanger and I'm going to use this to create a railing. Before the drywall compound is dry, I'm going to take this sharp tool and poke into the cardboard that is below. Because the cardboard corrugation is vertical right here, I can punch into the cardboard fairly easily. 
I went ahead and cut my wire hanger so that I could go ahead and punch that in as well to make sure that the holes were big enough for my wire hanger wire. And then I also use that to mark off with my fingers where I need to cut it and how high I wanted my railing to be for this area. Once I have my pieces cut, I can just add them into the holes that I previously punched and I added a little bit of glue. Now because this top of this tower is destroyed, I'm not worrying about these pieces being completely straight. In fact, this last piece here is purposely not straight because I want this side to look as though this has taken the most uh, destruction for the tower. To create the railing, I'm using a thin strip of cardboard and the way that it's cut has the corrugation again vertically and so the pieces will just nicely slip in between the corrugation in the cardboard. All I need to do is add a little bit of glue, make sure that it's shaped the way I want the railing to be, and then I can add it on. I'm also going to add a little bit of glue on top of the cardboard and it will kind of sink down into the cardboard grabbing onto the wire that's inside of it. I'm going to do this all the way around the tower, and once I get to the piece that's a little bit broken, I have also made this piece look as though the railing has been broken. It's at this time I realized I never took the time to put the mixture on the inside of the tower wall, at least on the top part here, that I wasn't a big fan of. So I use that mixture and go around the top of the tower because I want it to look really um, rocky up there. I also want to go over my railings because I want these guys to be very strong in the end. So I carefully go over each piece, making sure that I check back to make sure nothing's dripping in a place where I don't want it to drip. Now I'm not sure how well it holds on to metal, but I went ahead and put it up and down the metal railings because I was okay if they looked a little rough too. I went back over any place I added the drywall mixture and painted those so that it looked like it was all part of the tower. I also wanted to make it look like the stucco or the whatever's on the outside of the tower was falling off. So I started painting a line that looked like the inner part of the tower was showing. And so I guess the gray is the inner part of the tower. Now it doesn't have to make structural sense, but this is just what I was saying in my head. I also added flooring similar to the second floor. I just made it look a little rougher as though the flooring had been jostled and moved around. So this is what the tower is looking like. Um, I painted a brown line around it, and but it just, it didn't look right. It didn't look real. So I wanted to make it look like plaster was actually falling off this tower. So to do that, I went back with my drywall mixture and I started adding it around the edge and then I would take my finger and smooth it into the wall. By doing this I'm hoping you will actually, your eye will actually believe that there is plaster on the surface of another interior wall. Um, before with the brown line that I painted it just it looked very fake and I just wanted a little bit more realism and I'm actually pretty happy with how it turned out. I'm getting out my chalk pastels now and this is the same brown chalk pastel that I used previously on the outside of the building. So I'm going back with that and I'm definitely hitting the edges where the plaster is coming off the interior wall because I really want that to kind of stand out and look like that plaster has taken some damage over the years. Now it's time to talk about roofing. I did a poll in the last video and the thatch roof won by about 10%. So I am going to be using an old towel that we used for the dog. It has definitely seen better days. Obviously you can't recycle a towel, so I guess it's not using a recyclable, but we are reusing something or upcycling something that um, 
would at some point, I mean it's still an okay towel now, but at some point could be thrown away. So if you have an old towel, um, definitely if you are a kid watching this for some reason, don't just go take one of one of the towels, like make sure that it's okay to use the towel you want to use. But if you have a towel that no longer has a use or is falling apart, this is a great way to use it. Now, luckily, I have an entire video on thatch roofing using a towel, and I use the same steps that I'm using here. So I will link that at the end of this video. If you wanna go check out that video, it has step-by-step -step instructions for using a towel to make thatch roof. I also, if you were one of the ones who voted shingles, if you wanna see how to use recyclables for making shingles, I did that for the Adams Family House. So I will link that at the end of the video too. So if you're making a project and you either wanna do thatch roof or you wanna do shingles, at the end of this video, there will be links for you to follow to those videos that will help you do that step by step. I will tell you that this process is a lot easier if you start out with a towel that's about the same color that you want the roof to be. So starting out with a brown towel for a brown roof is a really great place to start. Uh, but <laughs> I did try this once with a pink towel and it takes a lot more paint than what you are seeing here. The purpose of the paint is that it gives the roof a little bit more interest and a little bit more variation in color. And then it also, by using this fork, it's kind of combing through the fibers of the towel, forcing them to go in one direction, very much like a thatch roof. And so this gives it that thatch appearance. It may not be the most perfect thatch roof, but I think it can be a really quick, really effective way to get a thatch roof on your project. And honestly, this was the quickest thing I did all week. I got the thatch roof done within the three, three or four hours. I will say this is kind of an easy roof to cover, but um, anyway, it is a pretty easy way to do thatch roofing. Now to finish off the inside, I didn't do a lot here, but I did add some more chalk pastel because I do want this to look like a fairy tale cottage that's been out in the woods for years. And of course, any place where hands or anything would have touched the walls would kind of build up a little bit of dirt and grime. So this is how the interior is looking so far. Um, not adding anything to the walls. This whole process of all these things took me about four days to get through to fix the tower, do the flooring, do the stairs and the roof. And so, um, you know, just take your time if you're wanting to do this or if you're wanting to create a cardboard house. It's really fun. You can get so many whimsical shapes and it's not a house you're going to find on the shelf at a store. It's uh, your own creation and your own design. I really like how the warm tones of the outside and the inside are kind of working with the cold tones of the stone. Now I did decide, I, I eventually want to put some greenery on this, especially where the tower meets the side of the house. There's a little bit of a gap. It's not perfect. So I have some greenery that I just wanted to play around with. I'm not permanently attaching it to the house yet, but it's one of those things that I just really wanted to see how it would look. Eventually when I do attach it, I'll just use a little bit of hot glue. I'll probably thin this piece out. That's maybe just a little bit too much greenery. Maybe something like I have in my hand right now where it's just little wisps of vines. I think the, the greenery that's on the left that I first put on is part of a um, piece that's supposed to make a wreath. So I just took that apart. A lot of you suggested a stargazing tower, so I thought just for fun we could borrow the telescope from the Adamses to see how that would work on the very top floor of the tower. And honestly, I think it would make a really magical stargazing tower. 
I'm not quite sure how much more I'm going to do on this house. I don't know if you guys want me to keep going and do stuff on the interiors, continuing to use recycled materials. Of course, like I said, I am going to at least be making one piece of furniture, but um, it's been so, so fun. It's definitely a break from some of the other stuff I do, which is really uh, strict with measurements, but I just, I had a lot of fun with this project. So that's all I have for you today. I really hope you enjoyed it. And if you are building a cardboard house along with me, I would love to know about it down in the comments. Let me know what you're building. Now I did have a couple suggestions saying that this house needed a dragon just like this one back here and what's funny about that is I actually had started two more dragons that I was just going to put on a craft table in the future but I never finished them so I thought we could look at them today and you could tell me whether you thought they were appropriate for this house and if you think I need to finish them to go specifically with this house. So I'm going to adjust my camera a little bit and then I'm going to bring out like I said these are not finished dragons but I started the forms for the dragons. Um, there's one more earth dragon and then one more sea dragon. Um, I don't know, this could be a seaside cottage that needs a seaside dragon. You guys can let me know what you think. Okay, so here is the earthy type dragon and he kind of sits pretty well on this ledge here. And of course, because he's made out of masking tape and aluminum foil, I can always kind of change him up a little bit. The trick with making these dragons look like they sit really well on top of a roof is uh, to make them look like cats, like cat bodies, because I don't know why. It just works. And I'll also, I'll link a video down below in the description if you want to see how I make these dragons. But this is the earth one, and here is my sea dragon. As you can see, he has like little webbed feet, and he's actually further along than the other guy, so let's see how well he fits on the roof. He would probably be a little bit more with his rear end on this side, with his head resting on the peak. So you guys can let me know if you think a dragon is appropriate for this roof, if you think an earthy dragon or more of a seaside dragon will work, but those are the two dragons that I have that maybe, not in the next week, I could work on for this house specifically. One last thing I need to mention about the piece of cardboard furniture. Like I said, I didn't quite get to finishing it for this video, which I think it will make a better individual video anyway, because if someone's looking for cardboard furniture, they may not necessarily want to sit through a roofing flooring session to get to the furniture tutorial. So I think making it a separate video makes sense. I'm not going to make you guys wait for an entire other week. I'm just going to work on this video and when it gets done, hopefully sometime this weekend, I will post it. To make sure that you see it when it goes up, make sure you have subscribed and hit the notification bell with all notifications and you'll see when that video goes up. I hope you guys have an amazing week and I will see you in the next one. Bye!